funny. What's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Live with Brian. And I got some announcements. I got some announcements. I had low key forgot that when well, I ain't gonna say I forgot. One of my friends on TikTok had sent me the little subscription uh, invitation thing or whatever, right? I missed it. It expired. I had a lot, you know, I was all over the place. But I will say this I got it now. So now y'all available and now y'all able to go to my super. I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Thank you for the love. You just came in, you already said heart. Thank you for the love. I'm just kind of figuring out how it is the subscription thing work. If y'all didn't see it on other people's TikTok, and y'all probably already know what to do. But let me tell y'all something. And also let me know if y'all can if y'all can hear me. Um, bad audio. Dang. I, let me make sure. Let me make sure. How about now? How about now? How about now? How about now? Let's double check. Let's double check before I, before I gotta start over the uh the episode. Is it good now? Is it good now? Talk to me. Talk to me with the audio. We good now? He says it's better. All right, cool. All right. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna start over. So welcome back to another episode of Live with Brian. Let me tell y'all something. So I now have the uh, subscription feature thing on here. So I don't know if you guys ever been to the other TikToks or if y'all been on other people's lives and y'all could subscribe and stuff like that. But now I now have the ability to uh, extend that to y'all. So, um, bro, I chose to take life. No idea what that means. But, um, but yeah, if y'all want to subscribe, support, all this type of stuff, do that. I'll have further information for that later. But welcome back to another doggone episode. Welcome back to another episode, y'all. And if y'all if y'all don't know who I am and y'all completely new to what I do and who I am and all this type of stuff, shout, first of all, shout out to 120 some of y'all up in here right now. Much love. Second of all, the only thing I ask of y'all to do is to tap that screen. It's the only thing you're going to have to do other than, I mean, shoot questions if y'all want to. But just tap the screen and get the lights going until you see that little meter up here. It's going to fill up. Boom. That's the only job you got today while you're on this live. And I appreciate every single one of y'all that support and that do it. But let me tell y'all something. Let's, let's just Because the people that's going to do it, they're going to do it. The people that's not, they're not. Let's, skip, let's just skip right into it. Y'all, when I tell y'all things have been turning around, I don't know if y'all, you know, they got a lot of people over here that's probably in because we ain't never had 140-something in a minute. We've been averaging like 30, 40-something people, but it's like 151 right now. Look. For all y'all that don't know me, we're gonna make it real quick. I'm a holistic trainer, holistic coach, uh, but we talk about everything on here. Y'all ask questions, I answer them. You know, y'all make suggestions, we have debates, talk whatever, boom, boom. I don't, I'm not really a biased type of person. I just kind of go for what I feel is right or what I've studied. But other than that, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Life has been great. We are literally walking into one of the, the biggest quarters of the spiritual year, of the holistic year. Now, if y'all not into all that spiritual stuff, that's cool, but I'll say this. You can miss out if you want to miss out. Because this entire episode, well, most of it, because knowing y'all, y'all have some different questions. The entire, most of this episode is going to be about preparing for it and what to do because most people do not know how to deal with that and they don't understand what's going on. So I'm here to kind of break it down a little bit. But one thing I will say is, let me let me face, let me face y'all. I'm not, I'm not facing y'all. One thing I will say is, it's time, bro, we about to walk, we about to walk into some crazy stuff. We about to walk into something that's gonna take us to the next dog on level. Somebody say Naruto and Sasuke the ghost, bro. Naruto, I've been a fan of uh I've been a fan of Naruto. My favorite character on there, actually, my two favorite characters is Rock Lee and Neji. Not saying Naruto and Sasuke ain't good, but that's just my two. I am, bro. I am always getting good signs and feel less depressed when I mess up. For sure, for sure. We're walking, we walking into that year. We're walking into that day. Not the new year, but the new uh the new season. But that leads me to say this too. So when we typically come down to the last quarter of the year, you got to think about it uh, physically and spiritually, like one in one. So it's around the last time whenever, you know, around the last part of the season where we get to have a lot of the, well, unless you're down here where I'm at. But, you know, we don't have really harsh winters down here in Louisiana. But, like, you know, the, the agriculture is starting to change. You don't get to really uh, see as many flowers bloom. You know, you don't really get as many plants flourishing and certain plants and fruit uh, foods that normally grow. You don't really get that a lot. So what I will say is we have to assess that the same way in our spiritual life as it is in the natural so any cycles you're trying to break 
any things you're trying to obtain, any any type of power or any type of favor, blessings, it don't matter. Like this is the time to sow y'all seed. I think it's called I, I saw I heard about it today. Well, I, well, not what I'm talking about, but I heard another um method. It's called like the Lions Gate Portal or something like that. It's supposed to open on August eighth. Now I'm not too familiar with that. I heard about it today. I'm gonna do some more deep diving on that. But what I know as far as what I've been studying and how spirituality works for me. I know that we're in the last quarter of the spiritual calendar. So it's like now is the time where you should be. I'm talking about like any habits that you're trying to get rid of, any habits you're trying to break, anything you're trying to obtain in life. Now is the time to do it, because if you decide not to do it or you take your time and you're wasting time, then guess what? You're like all this. Like is, you're really in a position to either make the rest of your, your year the greatest year or the worst year of your life. So for people that have habits, like really, really bad habits, and you're trying to break those habits, guess what? If you don't do anything to do that, that's a seed that you're sowing. And then it typically multiplies as the year goes on. All the people that's pretty much turning like 25, I mean, not 25, 27, 28. Like if you're, if you're that old, well that, I'm saying old, but you know, if you're that age, then now's the time to where those life cycles and life lessons, they typically they, they go back in a circle. So either you have, you have the power to change the trajectory of it, or you have the power to actually do what you need to do and move forward in life. Like we are in the most pivotal, one of the most pivotal points of the year. So I would highly advise y'all to start doing new practices, to start investing in yourself. Start, like I have a book, Um, I forgot what it's called. I think it's called The 10 Pillars of Wealth, I wanna say. I just got the book from one of my cousins. He's, he know how to, oh my God, the dude is just like a financial wizard. But um, he, uh, he, sent, he sent me the book about two, three days, I want, I want to say, two, three years ago. And I sent it to like every family group chat, every close friend that I have, I sent it to them, you know? And I was like, this is my first seed to y'all throughout, you know, for the for the year, for the rest of the year to come. And I've, I haven't read all the way through yet. And I'm a pretty quick, quick read, but I've been busy doing a lot of other things. But what I've read so far, it makes total sense. It's really like, they, they completely demolished the mindset of, or you have to wait to be rich, or you have to wait to obtain money, or you have to, oh, it's a long game. Not saying that it's not. I mean, certain different types of wealth, you can definitely, you know, it takes time, but like there's ways to get it within the next five to 10 years. Because if it was that easy, you know, or if it was that normal and regular for people like us to actually get that much money on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like every, I'm talking about like every, like next week we could be a millionaire. I'm pretty sure people will crack the code and they'll get going. But that's not the reality that we live in because if it was really that easy, the majority of us would, especially with where I'm living at in my financial status, I am an average person. I would definitely be a millionaire by now, but I understand the game that I'm playing and what I'm doing and how I'm investing, it's a lot bigger than me. I'm trying to invest in the community. I'm trying to invest in y'all. I'm trying to invest everywhere I go and I'm trying to also reap those benefits, but reaping those benefits based off of my investments of helping people and pushing them forward. Like prime example, I said, I don't know if y'all was in here, most of y'all was in here like the last episode, episode before last, I really talked about how, at least from, from what I've experienced and what I've studied so far, the one of the biggest ways to obtain financial freedom is to leave without even thinking about or invest without even thinking about the finance part. Not to say, not to say we should be oblivious about our savings and all that type of stuff and how we invest and stuff like that. But what I'm actually saying is that when it comes down to you trying to uh, obtain and, and get wealth on another level and things, I'm, it's called the 10 uh, pillars of wealth, the 10 pillars of wealth, not pillows, but pillars. I know I'm, I might talk back on front of the south, but hopefully pillars, P-I-L-L-A-R-S. But um, whenever you're like, prime example for me, right? It's like, this is what I do. You know, this is my practice. So like, of course I make a living from this, but I'm not walking around with 40, $50,000. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Excuse me. It's not like uh, even though I'm almost like a hundred, no problem. Even though I'm at one hundred and seventy thousand, well, almost at one hundred seventy thousand followers, that's not reflecting in my bank account. I'm just gonna be completely honest with y'all. That's not reflecting in my bank account. But one thing that the, about my process that I do love in my journey is that everything that I put out, even though there are financial benefits that come with it, my intentions are to heal people. My intentions are to educate people. My intentions are to invest back into people and the community. You know, because there's things going on that I'm doing outside of TikTok. You know, like when it comes down to helping people with their health and healing and stuff like that, you'll be surprised. The, the stuff that I have my hands in outside of social media, you know, and I've noticed with that as long as I'm staying pure. And then also I realize that God is my source. You know, that, that's just me. It's like I keep myself as spiritually balanced, as mentally balanced as possible. And I sow seeds. Of course, like I said before, we live in a capitalist world. And of course, it'd be great to 
make a hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars a month three hundred dollars a day a hundred dollars a day that would be amazing but you know we don't you know it, it's it's great that we can think that way and, be, and that can be a push and a motivation as far as survival reasons why it's even a thing but it feels better and it flows better to me at least whenever i don't even think about those things like we just technically ended a recession and definitely it showed it showed within like my business and stuff like that the past two months it's been especially with the, the glitch glitches that they've been doing with TikTok and stuff like that with the links and all that type of stuff you know it's like it definitely affected affected the business but that did not detour me from okay i still have a cancer prevention prevention protocol to put out which i put out today um i still have detox i got to get to people i still have education i got to get to people i still have videos i have to make you know what I'm saying? Like, I, if anything, is making me go harder because now I have to work 10 times harder to get this education and get this knowledge to people. And I feel like when you truly lead, and as far as with my niche and what I do, and when I feel, I feel like when you truly lead in that direction, everything just goes exactly as planned. You know, I'm an Aries. Somebody just asked, what is your zodiac sign? I'm an Aries. But um, it just everything just goes as planned. You know, it's like I, I'd rather us do the right thing or do what's right for us and for others and to receive benefits like that than to just be out here, you know, just scamming people and out here not doing what we have to do. Because if you, whether you want to believe it, a lot, believe it or not, a lot more people making money off of scamming and doing something that's honestly not even an original idea than they are doing something that came from them, that they curated, that they took time to manifest on and pray on and stuff like that. Like it's, it's just, the game, is, the game is different these days. And if that's how you make your money, that's on you. But you read what you sow. It got to come back to you. You may be making money now. You may be doing whatever. But, like, it's going to affect you in some way, shape, or form. But let's get into these questions. So, for y'all that's new, for y'all that don't know what's going on, um, I typically do, like, I have a Q&A. So, like, as I'm talking and we have different topics that we talk about and stuff like that, I also answer questions. It, it doesn't even have to be anything holistically related. But this is the part of my social media platform while I, I like to just come and talk to people that have been following me for quite some time and for people that's just new to the game or that's just trying to figure stuff out i don't care what you asking me if i have an answer for it or if i have a perspective on it i'm going to give it to you if i don't we just move on to the next thing because i'm not about to sit here and talk about something that i don't know that's not me but other than that um yeah y'all life has been life has been great like I'm, and I'm really hoping and praying that like a lot of people really tap into what's going on right now. Even though it feels pre-pandemic all over again with the monkeypox and stuff like that, I know it feels a certain type of way right now. But oh, I promise y'all, like there's there's a method to the madness, and there's definitely ways we can get up out of this system, and there's definitely ways we can progress forward. You know, so of course they might start coming out with the you know with the jabs and stuff again. They might start coming out with the the um I don't know if y'all had a curfew. Uh, but putting out like the curfews and stuff like that, you know, so it, it, you know, it is what it is But like we would we definitely can overcome this and live a certain type of life too and still live a lifestyle That's beautiful and plentiful to us He said bro all I listen to on YouTube and TikTok is all mentors like Kevin Gates stuff is gold I don't know about Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates do be spitting. He do be uh, spitting like some Like some knowledge, I guess you can say and, like he has his moments of wisdom but like one, I don't know that dude on a personal level. And two, the other stuff that I do be hearing, I just don't agree with. And that's not to knock him though. Like Kevin Gates makes phenomenal music. Like I'm from Southern Louisiana. Like he's been played all over, like from my elementary school all the way up until college. Like he was in the clubs, all that type of stuff. Dude has, a, have a, has had a phenomenal music career. Still having a great, uh, not political, a uh, popular celebrity and music career, but not per se my cup of tea. Wish the dude the best wish that he keeps on finding himself and doing whatever brings him wealth and, and benefits and stuff like that but like that's just not my cup of tea you say i need men mentors and that's honestly and i'm not saying like i'm a, I'm a mentor or i'm like somebody that that like takes it on upon itself to like just grab people like oh i'm your mentor but i will say i dish out information that is beneficial for especially for young men so if you if you're not following my youtube because a lot of these lives a lot of these uh podcasts that i'll be doing and like even when i have my guests on and stuff like that because i have a lot a lot of guests coming to me it's about to it's about to be dope but um a lot of people that that i talk with and a lot of things i talk about you can find on youtube type in coach brian nobody nobody on the internet spells their name like me. i'm glad i caught it when i did and copyrighted it when i did but um just type in coach brian or coach brian get your find on youtube and you'll see all my episodes and stuff like that even my stuff before i got this set up and all this type of stuff so it is what it is who do you think uh is the best mentor in hip hop? I don't really I don't base I don't base my mentors off of hip hop if that makes sense. It's like I base my mentors off of people that publicly 
put their work out and not even hip hop, but just like their life and like their advice. People that, that that actually try to teach people certain things. Now, granted, if I had to pick, say, if like if I had to pick like a musical person that's a mentor or I've learned something from their music, Kendrick Lamar, of course, because he opens up, especially his last album, he opens up about everything, all what we think is everything. He gave us a glimpse into his world, you know. So that's I would say that, but I don't really. I don't have hip-hop mentors that's not me like i'd rather read a book i'd rather like read like science studies and like and i also i have a i have an amazing father you know so like my dad's been a part of my life since i was born and he was here literally yesterday and like we'll have we always have like talks and stuff like that so if i look up to any man other than god it's gonna be my dad you know and my grandfather because they've always paved the way and always have have taught me like the things i should know rather than what i want to know it's like he gonna keep it real with me they never they never sugarcoated anything with me um, how do I feel about Andrew Tate? I'm just discovering who that really is. And he's, I don't know enough about him to have an opinion, honestly, because I've seen him on that interview with that girl in, in, in the UK. And I've seen the, uh, I've seen him on, uh, the clips of him with Fit, Fit Fresh, whatever that podcast is. And I've seen like clips of him and how he's taking the media by storm, but I don't know enough about him to form an opinion, but I'll look at some more of his stuff and, um, and give an answer. Cause I mean, he's a guy from what I know, he's a guy with a lot of power and a lot of money. So he's gonna be highly opinionated because who's really gonna tell him anything if he walk around with millions of dollars and can do what he want and he got leeway. But I don't, like I said, I don't know enough about him. Um, cycling ashwagandha has done wonders for my energy levels and sleep. Most definitely, I, should, I literally just finished um, on my cancer prevention protocol that I just posted. Um, and it's not for people with just cancer. Like if you wanna live an optimal life and, um, and you wanna live a better life as far as like with herbs and like health wise and lymphatic wise, go get my cancer prevention protocol. It's like $5. I think I have it on there for like $5. It's just a protocol breaking down how cancer works, breaking down why most people get cancer, with how cancer even functions, herbs for it, what the herbs do, foods for it, the focus is all of that. So go get that. It's, it's $5, bro. It's $5. But um, what can I combine with ashwagandha for overall health? Um, I'll just say go get my prevention protocol. But one herb in, in particular that's popping up in my head um is dandelion root dandelion root and milk thistle i'm talking about helps the lymphatic system helps the liver helps the pancreas helps the gallbladder helps with people with adhd cortisol levels adrenal gland dysfunction uh, uh sexual dysfunction like performance and anxiety and stuff like that ashwagandha is uh, now granted you know i'm glad you said cycle you do have to cycle on and cycle off uh you have to be careful with those type of things but also i tell people combine it with a, a higher fruit volume diet and you should be good like if you eat 80 percent fruits and vegetable fruits and vegetables and 20% meat, because even if you don't want to be, you know, like, like a, a vegetarian or vegan and stuff like that, you know, like that's a great way to do it to still stay, stay somewhat balanced. What is the benefit of maca root? So maca root, um, so you have black maca, yellow maca, and red maca. Red is for women, black is for uh, is for men. But overall, maca root in general is a good hormonal uh, regulator. So anything that the body's lacking on the endocrine side or the pituitary side as far as like the production of androgens and stuff like that it balances it out and it helps with like mental uh not gonna say disorders but mental mental um shortcomings it helps with those type of things and your nervous system you couple that with a lot of fruit juice a lot of berry juice a lot, well a lot of berry and melon juice you'll be good excuse me dandelion is that how you spell it what's the protocol called so my protocol is called the cancer prevention protocol if you go to my page and click the link in my bio, it should be the first thing that pops up. Cause I, just, I literally just put it on there before I came on here. Or if the it's TikTok thing being stupid and you can't uh, get to the link, just type in coachbrian.com. I have my own website, coachbrian.com. And it's on my page. It's in my protocol section. Um, Dandelion. So that like the flower, dandelion root, dandelion. My bad, I say dandelion cause my accent, but dandelion root, dandelion root. And that's how you can find it. A lot of people think it's like, oh, it's a weed and then blah, 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 blah. That stuff actually helps. Like the weeds and stuff that we have growing around here, like are where you typically at, they're growing because of the wants and the desires and the shortcomings of the geographical location. Like down here, a lot of dandelion root grows out here. A lot of milk thistle grows out here because down south, we suffer with diabetes, high blood pressure. We suffer with a lot of cancer. We suffer with a lot of cortisol dysfunction, adrenal gland dysfunction. So the earth sees that spiritually and physically. It's like, man, my people dying. What, what can I do? And then it gives you the herbs that you need. 
Now, they have Roundup pesticides, herbicides, all that type of stuff. They spray them down. You don't need weeds in your yard, blah, blah, blah. That's because people are ignorant. People don't take the time to like, stu and not say like people are, are stupid or they're not trying to learn anything or get better, but the average person is not going to take the time or has no desire to even go look into herbs or why this is growing right here or what is this plant for, blah, blah, blah. And that's nothing against them, but that's just how we've been brainwashed to be since they started the big uh, standard American diet. That's just what they're pushing. Uh, do you think seedless fruit is bad? Will it give you the same benefits and vitamins as min and minerals? I'll say this: you eat what you can get your hands on. Like I'm not a I'm not a fan of seedless fruits, even though I know some of them aren't genetically modified. And if you just crossbreed certain things, you know, like they'll come out seedless. Me personally, I'm just not a fan. A lot of the fruits and vegetables that I eat, the seeds typically hold the most abundance of nutrients, and I use the seeds in my tinctures and my teas, grinding them up and pop. Like I typically use those things. Like, but. You know, it, it's it's to each his own. If that's what you can get your hands on and that's all you have, do what you can. But just make sure on the other side, holistically, you're taking the herbs to counterbalance and you're eating properly to counterbalance to where you're not having this type any type of dysfunction because from what I've read and what I've seen, I could be wrong, but from what I've seen, you know, that stuff messes with estrogen and, and testosterone levels. So I typically like to keep all of my fruits sea dead if I can, depending on what's around me. Now, luckily for me, I'm, in at, I'm at the bottom of Louisiana. I'm in Southern Louisiana, so we have fresh food markets we have farmers markets and stuff like that so i typically have seeds in, in my fruits and vegetables and stuff like that but you know i don't i don't really play with the seedless i swear i saw you online are you an adult performer i wish in another life um in another life and i told this to my girlfriend like if i if i really could like start over or if i had a choice i probably would have did it i'm not even gonna lie to y'all even though like that that world and that type of stuff messes us up mentally and spiritually like the curiosity in my nature and like i'm just competitive so it's like i would i would have liked to try that industry out and actually be good at it you know so and that's just that's just me that, that's just me <laughs> that's just how i am but um yeah it, it, it is what it is it just is what it is that's not that's not the life i've chosen and it's not the things that i really stand on right now but it is what it is i'm in texas texas bro and i'm a huge saints and lsu fan what part of texas if you were if you were LSU and Saints fan, you must be in like South or Southeast Texas. You must be right by me because when you go North, it's Texas A&M, it's uh, Rice, it's, uh, not Purdue. I forgot what the other uh, stuff is out there. Are there any seeds that we should stay away from? Um, Not that I know of as far as like what's in most people's fruits and stuff these days. Not that I know of. Not, not what they have in the, um, in the markets. Now, when it comes down to like different seeds, finding them in the wild and like, cause that, that's nothing I tell people. When it comes down to like turning things or using certain herbs and, st and stuff like that, it's better to typically boil them before you use them because you are like soak them because it's good to like extract the, the certain toxic, like prime example. So you if you was to sit there and eat, um, pumpkin seeds are really good for parasites. Um, if you was to sit there and eat beans, right? You didn't cook them, no nothing. You just chew they hard, you just chewing on them. Like it's, you honestly supposed to wait until this, until they sprout. We should be eating the sprouts of beans, but most people don't do that. That's not what we've been, we've been promoting and stuff like that. That's not what people do. So when it comes down to eating a bean, a bean is technically a seed, you know? So if you used to just eat it as is, it actually messes up the kidneys. It actually produces like, a, I forgot what type of uh, cytotoxin or something like that. Like it, it, it really messes up the kidneys in the body. It, it Like the gas and the stomach dysfunction, like it'll really mess you up. But that's why they say soak your beans before you cook them because like all it's this particular type of gas and chemical that's released from it and it softens and it breaks through the membrane and then when you cook it because you know most people ball or like long stew their uh their beans and stuff like that you get you don't get the indigestion you don't get the gas you don't get the bloating and stuff like that because you know you've actually take the time to prepare your beans but i would say not necessarily avoiding seeds but like if you're going to use different because like nettle seed stinging the stinging another root of nettle seed that's good for you but there's a certain way you have to prepare it. Either you're gonna put it in a tincture, if you're gonna you're gonna uh, steep it in a tea, or you're gonna grind it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's different. You just gotta be careful with that type of stuff. I love pumpkin. Yeah, I already read that. But yeah, that's that's. I wouldn't like I said to to wrap that up. I wouldn't technically. I wouldn't technically like say seeds are bad. At least from what I know, that's on the market. I wouldn't say seeds are bad. I feel like the way people, the way people use and their knowledge of seeds are bad. They don't really understand it. My son is allergic to legumes. Can he eat bean sprouts? I would assume so because 
like I said before, it's probably because it's in a seated stage that it can't process properly. Because that's what must, that's one thing people gotta understand. Allergies are just thresholds. So it's like certain people have an insane amount of like allergies because their lymphatic system cannot tolerate or it can't process certain things properly. So when that particular item gets inside of their system, the way they be digestive, respiratory, lymphatic, it doesn't matter. It causes a detox reaction symptom or it just causes a health crisis because the body's like, we just told you and we've been telling you we can't process this and you putting this inside of us. Are you around this thing? And most people don't cleanse out lymphatically. You know, so if you don't take the time to clean out your system and stuff like that, your allergies honestly get worse over time. You know, but I would say the um, the sprouts, the bean sprouts, honestly shouldn't hurt because if you're if they if he's allergic to legumes, he's allergic to the seed form. Try a sprouts, try a very very small dosage, but if there's still a reaction, then just worry about flushing the system out. Even if you want, if you don't want to do that, flush the system out first. High, especially if he's a boy, high berry diet. I'm talking about like crazy amounts of berries. It's so good for the endocrine system. It's so good for testosterone. It's so good for his nervous system and a lot of berry juice. Not cold, not uh, not pasteurized, not from concentrate. I'm talking cold press, like organic juices. Are drinking like help with any? Wait, what? Are drinking like helping with anxiety and etc. What are you talking about? What does apple cider vinegar do? Does it detox the body? I'm I'm one of those people who do not believe in internal. Um, consumption or usage of apple cider vinegar. I'm not, and I never will be. It's too acidic. It's not like a lemon or lime. A lemon or lime, they're acidic, but when they get inside your body, they they, they alkalize. You know, like the body knows what to do with it. It's like it knows how to turn that battery on. But when it comes down to apple cider vinegar, it eats away at the enamel, it pulls at the bone marrow, it messes with the blood and stuff like that. And you got people that use it, they've been using it and it works. But as far as from what I study, and my nose, I don't like the smell. And as far as like what my experiences with it and my studies on it, I just don't agree with it. I don't like it. I feel like it does more damage in the long run than it does benefits in the long run. You know, that's just not me. I have always wondered if there was a holistic remedy that helps cut habits. Definitely. I often tell people fast. Reasons why I made my 7 and 10 day detox link in my bio. I go to coachbrian.com. Like, one of the biggest reasons why I created my detox program is for people to understand that you can cleanse cellularly and lymphatically. And once you start doing, because like, prime example, I've had people who had, just like some people would have like drug addictions and alcoholic addictions, they had certain candy and food addictions. I'm talking like, they'll be doing it, wouldn't even realize they're doing it. When it would try to stop, they would have withdrawal, sweats, all that time, like really, really, really bad. Put them on my seven and 10 day, tweaked it a little bit, because some some people have like severe, severe symptoms, tweaked it out a little bit, they good. And that's another thing to find a substitution. You have to find a substitution. If you a drinker and all that type of stuff, start getting on fruit juices, start getting on dandelion root tea and coffee and stuff like that, to where you can get that fixed without having your pancreas, your liver, and your gallbladder being tore up and your kidneys. Um, wingworms. Uh, you can get some wormwood. You can get um, milk thistle dandelion root, and you can get some. You can start oil pulling too. Start using some coconut oil. It's all over oregano, I believe, is the other one. I use coconut oil, which is why I can't remember the other one at the moment. But you just start oil pulling, and that'll definitely help you out. Do you believe thoughts create reality? Most definitely. That's high key the reason why I'm sitting in front of this phone on TikTok on live talking to y'all right now. I had zero intentions of being at least taking my holistic stuff this far. I just wanted to keep it into the community. But the more I started learning, the more I started studying under people, the more I started pursuing certifications and stuff like that, and then trying to get my business off the ground as well. It my thoughts and my visions of me getting to the masses and getting to the nations and stuff like that and like really helping people. I thought about it and I saw it before I did it and here I am, not even a year later. You know, I've been I've been doing this for going on seven years. I've been actually running a business for like three and a half, four years I wanna say. And I've been on TikTok for like six, seven months. I want well, seven, eight months I wanna say. So and it's all from a thought. It's all from an idea. It's all from, because I'm real big on, it's down here. I got my vision board. Like, I'm real big on, on vision boards. I'm real big on manifestation. I'm real big on, if you have a dream, write it down and dissect it. I do iridology. I mean, iridology, um, uh, iridology. You know, I study and that's, that stuff too, to where like you can study the, the dissection of dreams and all that type of stuff. Everything is symbolic. We have 3D, 4D, 5D. We just in 3D right now. We sleep, we go 4, 5D. That's whole another conversation. I have never really tried holistic remedies. Which one of your plans would be easier to start? If, if you're trying to just like do a good restart in general and do better, seven or 10 day detox. I would advise you to do that. 
like you would do that and it will start to start your journey off and get you to where you need to be but you can also get my protocols i also have a book i just put out called coaches quick fix it's in the link in my bio as well like i break down what i believe are the true causes of these diseases and things of that nature herbs that'll help with it you know and like ways to overcome it or i have particular protocols i just dropped my cancer protocol and the prevention of cancer uh, protocol for a healthier better life i got other protocols i'm about to drop you know i have actual herb proprietary blends i'm about to start selling real soon so i would say but if you're trying to start and you want to experience something my seven to ten day detox if you want to learn something my book and it's all in the link in my bio allcoachbrian.com fasting and deworming uh equals clear in my equal wait hello fasting and deworming equals clear mind equals positive thinking equals manifest what you want most definitely I oftentimes tells tell people that it's hard to to unlock or to manifest or to even cohesively comprehend something when you have so much going on inside of you like a lot of my clients that deal with me one-on-one -on -one or they get personal consultations and stuff like that they book their time with me to actually heal on a personal level instead of just you know going get an item or something like that i oftentimes tell them i put them on a week-to-week -week checkup and i'm sitting there like y'all need to make sure y'all need to make sure that you are taking the time to meditate to pray to fast to release and to also track your emotions, track your cravings, eat like this, take these herbs, do this at this time, do this particular fruit juice combination, eat these fruits at this time, to where there can be a sense of harmonization in the body. And then I educate them, okay, here's how the, the Ma'at principles work, here's how the spiritual principles work, here's how the anatomical and the physiology principles work. And once you start putting those things together, I mean, how do you lose with that combination? How do you not manifest with that combination? Anytime things don't go right in my life or anytime, other than obviously we have to go through life learn, uh, life journeys and be tested. But like anytime stuff starts going crazy, I oftentimes look around, okay, what did I not do properly? I always go to me first. I always blame myself first because I can, I can furthermore better myself or look at my habits and go back and, and try to get myself together before... You know, I try to go blame it on the, the devil and all that type of stuff. You know, it's just crazy. People be quick to say, oh, it's the devil and blah, blah, blah. It's like, nah, you, you got bad habits. You're a bad person. Are you just not disciplined and consistent? You know, not saying that evil forces don't come against us, but a lot of people have self-inflicted problems, if I'm just going to be honest with you. Do you think XXX Tentacion was changing for the better before he passed away? I, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan. Like, his music is great. I've heard a few of his songs, but, like, I never followed him like that. I didn't really hear about him or really get into him like that until he did pass. So I honestly, I honestly don't know. So I, I, don't, I don't have a solid answer for that. Is meditation is meditation just not thinking about anything or focusing on breathing? Exactly. So when you meditate, and oftentimes tell tell people it's harder to not think about something than to think about something when you're meditating. So whatever comes to you, focus on that. If you decide to sit down and clear your mind, and you're breathing on, you're working on your breathing and your breath work, and then certain things pop up in your head. Focus on it and tackle it. Certain traumatic things start start popping up in your head. Focus on it and tackle it. Because mentally and spiritually, your body's trying to get through it, trying to process it, trying to get over it. But if every time it comes to you, you cringe and you close off and you oh, I can't do this, you're pulling another step away. And, and it, it, it's traumatic. It's intense. I do. I've been through it. I understand it. Deliverance is hard, but you have to crack at it. You have to give yourself time and time again to build up a tolerance, to build up an understanding, and to build up a system that's going to help and work for you. Because if you do not it does nothing for you it does nothing for you just you just hurting yourself i have felt the earth has seasons for certain things to grow for a reason like it's telling us most definitely that's the first that's what i started off this podcast with it's like we're entering a season to where it's like we should be investing some of our biggest spiritual and physical seeds into our lives others and the planet right now because what's coming in the next eight to eight to 14 days like literally going to set you forward i'm going to thank you so much for the roses uh, is going to set you forward or set you back you just have to decide what what you're gonna whatever you're gonna put out whatever you're gonna do you just have to decide what those things are going to be and how you're going to move because if you don't do that then you're just going to be you're going to be backwards you're just not going to get nowhere in life you know but hey bro to each his own like that's why i'm on here and i don't like i said i don't really pick a side but i tell people what i know like if y'all know me i was working towards fruitarianism all that type of stuff but now you know, I just tell people what I know works. The studies that I work, stuff I've done with my clients, the results that I've had with my people. You know, so it's like, I'm never gonna say animal protein is superior to plant protein and plant protein is superior to animal protein. I'm just gonna tell you what I understand. 
you get these benefits and you yield more benefits like this eating this than you would eating that and mixing this with that you know because when you start picking a side it feels like a war i'm here for harmony because you got people that's been eating 30 40 50 60 years of however they've been eating and to make them go from that to that and their molecular structure is based off of the other things you're going to send them in the shop so let's migrate you as efficiently and as responsibly as possible and as realistically as possible for real results philosophical question do you think poverty is a, ne is a necessity in the world i me personally i feel as though we would never have a utopia on earth never never ever ever, ever. because for everybody to simply be on that much of one accord and that much of on the same page to have pretty much perfect utopian harmony throughout the planet is going to take literally the fabric of balance justice nature everything that we understand and believe in is going to completely eradicate so i feel like do i feel like it's a necessity in the world yes and no because i mean well no i'm just, honestly i'm gonna say no because i feel like if you take away the capitalism if you take away all of the mess that's going on and you taking away so much of the 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 money 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 and resource 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 based way of living that we have then i mean it's going to automatically dwindle like poverty is going to dwindle but even in the animal kingdom you have certain because it's, it's all about survival of the fitness at the end of the day our survival of who has access to certain things rather than others you know so you look in a while as certain lions get older they can't really hunt like they used to they can't really survive how they used to you know so they go they oftentimes die of starvation or they get attacked or they get killed and then you've got to think about the land and the sea and stuff like that you have certain creatures that are the bottom feeders they thrive off of bottom feeding and they don't even realize they're bottom feeders you got certain ones that they that we like to call apex predators and stuff like that you know what i'm saying so i feel like I'm, i wouldn't necessarily say that poverty is a necessity but i do feel as though balance is a necessity now you got people that benefit people that don't benefit and then that's that's subjective subject that subjective as well because you got people like me who have come up in very harsh conditions not that we're not rich you know but like i still lived a happy childhood i still lived to me a very healthy childhood i didn't grow up with no range rovers and i still don't have no range rover no beamer no honey i don't have a hundred i don't even have five thousand dollars i can just go pull that right now and just spin like that i don't but i'm happy you know I, i'm in a good place i'm striving for better but like i'm happy that doesn't make my my quality of life or my quality of spirit and sense of self less than anybody else or either a homeless person so you know like everybody's ideology and perspective of life is different but that's also a part of the balance whether it's a naivety or it's an actuality or it's a it's a hypothetical like it's all balance at the end of the day thank you for the heart i just saw the love i'll give the love right back to you <laughs> shady say period <laughs> big period Hunger definitely shouldn't exist. Uh, I It's such a... Oh, a typo, my bad. Okay, hunger definitely shouldn't exist. It's such a shame that in 2022, some people still die of starvation. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say on the last episode that I had, I literally talked about um, communities, especially in, like, in impoverished areas, because we really know it's just a result of redlining and lack of resources that they intentionally do. Mm -hmm. And it's an institutionalized and a systemic way of, 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 of governing the areas. But I digress. Mm -hmm. Um... I still feel as though in like, especially like the slums and the hoods and stuff like that, there should be fruit trees on the corners, public fruit trees for everybody that the city or the community takes a hold of and, and, um, and, 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 nour and nourishes and, um, and, and balances to where, and also too, here's another thing too, if y'all some uh, planters, whenever you're planting seeds and stuff like that, spit in the soil, spit in the seed because it's going to pick up on the microbiome and the stuff that you're lacking. And it's going to, it's going to help those, uh, those plants grow a particular way to give you those particular type of nutrients and resources. But I digress. Um, I'll say this, if they start planting forest and not forest, true, like fruit trees and all these other type of things all around the corners and the hood and stuff like that and actually keep them up, like a homeless person is going to eat what they can't eat, you know? So if they're starving and stuff like, and that's nothing too, these restaurants, all the food they throw away, all these fast food places, all the food, it's not the best foods, but it's like, how about we just give it to the homeless? How about we have a drug? You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, it's so much prime example that kid that was in new york i believe that worked for dunkin donuts he started a movement he was like well i noticed that we throw away hundreds literally hundreds of donuts a day so i started taking the donuts and i started just walking around to the homeless and giving them donuts every day blah 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 they shut them down for that. i think kid got fired for that because it's against uh policy and this that and the third and i'm sitting here like wow this this, this how we moving okay and, that, and that's it is what it is that's that's just how they do it but in my personal belief if we give people better access to better resources, we would have half the problems that we have in this planet. But that's just me. That's just me. Um, after 100 years, most of us would 
B, what do you think of life after us will... Oh, he couldn't say what he wanted to say. Or, or she. Are they? Um, after 100 years, most of us would be that word. What do you think life after us would be like? I honestly don't know. And I contemplate that from time to time. Because I'm pretty sure there's things that our forefathers and ancestors thought about life would be in because of their particular stance in the world. And how, like, prime example, my ancestors were slaves. So, and they died in slavery. You know, so it, it's like how... I can only imagine, I can understand what they hopes for the future would have been at, but if they was to base the future based off their ideology and their perspective of life and what they're subjected to at that time, I don't see them seeing like wholeheartedly seeing um, a future that we live in right now. You know, it's like there's hopes of it, there's visionaries, there's people that, and there's activists that got us to here, you know, and there's revolt. That's nothing too. Stop letting history lie to y'all. Like we revolted. Nothing about us progressing from slavery to now was all the way peaceful. We re Yes, we did escape and stuff like that, but we revolted. We was like, it was real wars going down for us. Like we were actually highly resistant, even on the slave ships. Even when we got here, we were highly resistant. You know, so don't don't fall for the narrative of like we were just happy go look. Yes, master, I'm a good N-word and blah, 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 blah. No, we was fighting every day. They That's why they had to whip and do all of that and buck break and all that type of stuff. Go read uh the Willie Lynch book. A lot of people say, oh, it's theoretical. No, that's what the people was doing. And what we did, we combated that, you know? So let's not fall for that. But at the end of the day, it's half and half. I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't know how they even viewed the future, but I know my hopes, my personal hopes for the future is that nature keeps doing what it's been doing and weeding out the things that's um, causing the problems, the areas that's causing the problems, you know? like, And we furthermore, as a society, get to a more fluid place of just living and not having to worry about titles not having to worry about legislation, not having to worry about status and stuff like that, and we just live and coincide. Do I feel as though we'll have a utopia? Never. Never. Never, ever, ever, ever. But I do feel like things can get better as a society. But we'll see. Hopefully I can look down wherever I'm at or look up or wherever I'm at, you know, and be like, oh, let's go. You know what I'm saying? But I don't I don't know. I don't know. I haven't died. I don't know what it's like on that side yet. Um, I used to sneak water. Oh, if, if I'm missing y'all, um... If I'm missing y'all comments, I'm really far away from my phone. I can't just get up and scroll like that. If I missed your comments, I saw like three or four that y'all put. Just put it again, y'all. It's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not my fault. I'm not like ignoring the question. I'm just, you know, I have to talk, look, talk, look. So just retype it again if I didn't get to your question. What are your thoughts on sleep? Should I keep sleeping eight hours a day or that's too much? I, I mean, I personally believe that we should get six to eight hours of sleep a day, but I'm not even going to lie to you. The better I eat and the better I function and the more I'm on my holistic junk, is like I don't require as much sleep. I wake up like sometimes three hours before my alarm clock, and I'm like, whoa, like I'm I'm up, and I'm I can, and I'm like that up until I crash and go to sleep. So maybe it's my nature, maybe it's not. I don't know. I even noticed that with my clients, it's like my client that I just I helped her. She had precancerous uh problems. Another one had postpartum depression, all that type of stuff. I got them together and like it's like man, I've been waking up naturally like four five o'clock in the morning, and I don't really go to sleep till like ten eleven o'clock, and I'm not exhausted. I've been doing it for months. I'm like, okay, you just. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Everybody's body is different, you know, and then everybody's clocks are different. So I would say as long as you're not facing any health or nutrition de uh, deficits and stuff like that, live your life. That's it. That might be your way or that might be that might be your spirit trying to tell you, OK, you have more time. You know, it's like since you're not tired and you're not having any effects or stuff like that, use your time wisely. This may be your season of investing in yourself. I would say do that. She said, now nah, look up, child. I didn't mean down there. Me personally, I don't feel like I'm going down there. But, you know, it's like, because I'm, I'm doing very good work on this planet. But, you know, just, just depending. You, you never know. You just never know what's going to happen, you know. But, yeah, just say it, just to say it. <laughs> Here lately, I'm not sleeping or eating as much as I usually would. Like I said before, if that's not causing a problem with your mental or your physical state and stuff like that, you just ain't hungry. Just stay. I always say this, though. Stay hydrated, though. Like fruit juice, cold press. You have to stay hydrated. That's it. That's the game changer right there. Pumpkin seeds salted or roasted. It's up to you. I wouldn't put salt on it, but it's up, it's up to you. Um, if you're going to do it salted, do it like here and there. You don't like just eat it. Eat to live rather than live to eat. You know, like. Did I say that correctly? Eat to live. No, yeah, yeah. Eat to live rather than live to eat. Do you believe every illness is curable? Most definitely. Because if you look at the formation of the illnesses and how they started, they came from a deficit, a defect, or it came from a, a habit. Like all, all, I think it was, um, what's that dude name? I forgot. It's not Socrates. What's his name? Some, some Greek mythologist back then was like, um, I forgot. I cannot think of his name right now. 
But he was like, every disease starts in the gut. And I don't disagree because most cancers start with what we're eating are the things that's actually affecting us internally from our environment and stuff like that. Most endocrine disorders come from a fusion of bad or sick cells and like things that, that really they're trying to create with one another and they're not balanced. It's always an imbalance or something like that. And there's a herb for literally everything on this planet. You know, so or there's a or there's a way to to get yourself together, I should say, but teach his own. But um man, I'm, I'm Aristotle. It was Aristotle. Okay, I was right then. But um what's your favorite probiotic? I don't I ugh, I don't do probiotic. I don't I haven't I can't even tell you the last time I had to take one. Probably was like twenty fourteen, maybe I wanna say, when I was in college. But like I don't I feel like you can you can like eat to to increase your microbiome but not even to increase to balance your microbiome and you can eat and take herbs that'll help you help you out and you'll be good like not don't get me wrong i'm not completely against medicine because i mean some people just like some people just need a quick fix now or they they might actually pass away you know so if you need that fix to like get yourself together and then you come to the holistic side and you heal like that cool but if not then i mean you know it, it's if you don't really need that stuff, I would say just don't, don't. There's no, for what? You know, like, just eat right. Do right by your body. You know, like, you may not, there's days I don't want to work out. There's days I don't want to eat a certain type. There's days where I, cause, and I hate that. People go vegan or people start eating a certain type of way and, and like, oh, well, meat tastes bad now and blah, 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 blah. Child, I miss me a good real. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's like, it smells good and it tastes good to me. And, and I eat a high volume. A very high volume of fruits and vegetables and fruit juice you know like even whenever i did go like completely plant-based like and that was i was like almost a year you know and that was what you want me to do like i, I like that's human nature and i'm from the south but it is what it is i feel like people just be being extra but it is what it is what do you recommend for good health um depends like would you safe way here's a safe way so do a detox first. So do my seven or 10 day detox. You can go to coachbrown.com. I'll get the link in my bio. Follow that up with a good fruit juice fast or increase your melons and your berry intake and then cut off all of like the white anything, white sugars, white, white, white bread, white flour, all that type of stuff. And then give your stomach a chance to alleviate itself. And then focus more so on regular bowel movements and, um, and colon, and colon, um, can't think of the word but alleviating your colon and like letting stuff come out of your body then worrying about all everything else you know i feel like people try to tackle too much at one time have you tested the law of attraction and does it really work the law to me the law of attraction they shouldn't i ain't gonna say they shouldn't have made a term and a big thing about it because people do need to know about it but we walk into it every day law of attraction karma reaping what you're sowing sowing the reaping uh whatever the other terminology is for it feng shui all that type, yin yang like it's we do it every day we do it every day. You got people that attract horrible partners because they're horrible people and they're looking for horrible areas or like they're looking in broken areas. You got people that attract some of the richest people in the world because that's what they want and blah, blah, blah. Like it's, my God, is is literally aligning with what you want and fixating your, it's like somebody trying to, trying to better themselves and become a doctor. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a, a neurological surgeon. So I'm going to align myself with good grades so I can apply and get scholarships for college. I'm going to align myself with succeeding in college so I can get to the best medical schools. I'm going to align myself with good medical medical schools and do the best that I can so whenever I finally get to be a doctor or I get in that area, I'm the best at what I'm doing or I actually qualify for my vision. It's that simple. It's all about intention, in my opinion. Is raw macaroon good for menopause or what can I do? Yeah, yeah, raw macaroon is, is totally fine. Couple that with... um. A lot of cherry juice, cold press, um, a lot of berries, a lot of watermelons, and you'll be good. A lot of uh, no, not that. Um, and 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 uh, uh, even in primrose, you can use that too. Um, we'll order your ten day detox. Yes, I'm a sugar addict. Thanks for all your guidance. There you go. God bless. Thank you. Saying God bless you too. Like that's that's what I do. That's what we talked about at the beginning of this podcast. That's what I do. It's like I my whole point is to educate and help people, and you're getting something that you can reuse. You know, it's a PDF protocol that's going to educate you more because everybody looking for a quick fix and blah, blah, blah. No, here's some education because now that you, you have it, it's going to impact you. It's going to impact people around you, your family, your family's family. Like, let's come on. Let's sow these seeds, man. Let's get back to where we're supposed to be at. I cut, I cut out all 
white foods for a week now and I have the worst headache now. Okay, just because you're, if you're cutting that out, what are you replacing it with? A lot of people think that detoxification, all that type of stuff, you gotta starve yourself and all of that, cause you gotta cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out, and the standard, the standard American diet is built around that crap. So with that being said, if you're gonna cut it, you have to replace it. And headaches do typically come from detox symptoms because your body's probably like, okay, the gunk's not in here no more. Let's say you did replace it properly and the gunk's not in here anymore. Okay, so I have to alleviate and like move all of this blockage and blah, 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 blah. So it comes with it from time to time. Reasons why in my detox uh, protocols, I give people like detox symptoms uh, breakdown and how to alleviate them. But I also say like, if you have replaced it, replace it with something that's actually gonna do well for you. So you can, you know what I'm saying? So you can get to where you need to be. I don't really understand karma. A lot of people, did horrible stuff and then completed their and completed their lives normally. But that's the thing. How do you know that? Because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. One thing that I learned is that a lot of people will take stuff to the grave. A lot of people will walk around with a smile on your face. Like Baby Keem said, you smile in my face, but are you happy for me? Are you really happy? People are so good at putting masks on because we live in a day and age to where, especially with social media, people only post the best part of their lives. People only post what they want people to see or a narrative of what they want people to see. Reason why I haven't taken down any of my videos on YouTube. Like you're gonna see when my ideology was a certain type of way and my growth all the way to where I'm at now. It is what it is, I'm human. I do not, don't expect me to be perfect, I'm not God. I can't, I don't know how to create a person from scratch. I don't know how to create anything from a molecular anatomical structure. I don't have that capability, not, neither that knowledge. You know, so it's like, I wouldn't even focus on those other people. I would focus on you. When I do this, this happens. When I sow this, this happens. When I believe and manifest and put my intentions towards this, this happens. And you put that inside of your way of living and then you watch the difference. I have an issue with nausea during my period cramps. I literally throw up, how can I stop this? So a lot of um, a lot of cold press, any, any fruits that's red, but a lot of cold pressed fruits that are red and yellow that's typically gonna help with your gut and that's because like the nausea and the cramping and the throwing up comes from like the androgens being disbalanced so you might actually be passing some especially that blood clots and stuff like that too you might be trying to pass certain types of cysts that's trying to get out it might be a, a earlier form of or like a forming process of pcos so make sure that you're flushing on a day-to-day -day basis on and off your period yes they are good at putting on smiling masks and talking behind your back for sure for sure like you Man, the one thing I learned is that even your closest of friends, you don't know them. You you know what they should like. Prime example, if every if everybody think about the closest people to you, and imagine a day where y'all all locked in a room for 24, 48 hours. Thank you so much for the rose, my love. 24, 48 hours, right? And y'all go follow my top three uh my top three supporters, my top three views, the people that's out there. Y'all go follow. Go show them some love. But if you was to go uh go in the room with those people and they can't leave until they write a book about you and who and like who you are describing you not one person in that room is going to write something exactly what you would write or have something exactly as the other person would have it so that just goes to show that you don't know no you don't know anybody not even your parents you don't even not even not even your partner you probably don't even know that person 100 percent. that's stuff they probably hiding from you you know and that's not a that's not really a bad thing because i mean not every, uh, I don't want to get in trouble when I say this, but like, I, I, let me say this the right way, because I don't, I don't want, I don't want to come off a certain type of way. But I, but I will say this: I feel as though it's good to keep certain parts closed off, but at the same time, you will probably never know somebody front to back, inside and out, a hundred percent. You'll get ninety nine point nine nine nine, but that point one percent it's oftentimes detrimental. It's oftentimes something you honestly should know. It's oftentimes something that probably detour you. And you gotta think about it. You've been knowing somebody or these people for so long. Think about your longest, closest friend. And that little part that you don't know is probably the thing that probably makes y'all not be, that will probably separate y'all friendship. You you never know, you know? So it's like, I wouldn't, folk, man, just focus on you. <laughs> Do what's best for you, you know? And not even, not even in a selfish way. I hate that people, be like, well, when you put yourself first, that's selfish, blah, 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 blah. I'm all I got. I'm going to die by myself. Like, even if I'm married, like, I'm dying by myself. If I don't outlive my partner, my partner will still be on this planet years to come, and I'm dead. You know, so it's like, I cherish, don't get me wrong, cherish your partner, cherish your life, cherish all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, do what's best for you and be true to yourself and walk in truth. Because when you do that, nothing and no one 
can literally come between you and who you are in your relationship because the best relationship you can have is with yourself and that that's that's the that's the premise that's the basics that's the one-on-one of holistic anything in order for anything to be whole holistic like you have it starts with you it starts with your inside it starts with your mind and if you're not taking the time to do all of those things and put that together then baby you're gonna it's gonna be a hard life and i'm not that's not me that's not me. i'm not doing that i'm not doing that i know for a fact that people i knew were saying things and thought a certain type of way about me same same like like especially as i got older and certain friends i started losing certain friends and then we would associate link up and talk and catch up and they would tell me thank you for the rose my love and they'll tell me um they'll tell me how they thought about me and viewed me in times past stuff like that i'd be like man i see why we, we wasn't friends because it was because you felt a certain type of way about me. you know what i'm saying that wasn't even true at that like they'll, they'll people will perceive or preconceive a notion about you and don't even take the time to even ask or find out if it's true you know what i'm saying so it, do what's best for you focus on you but why i gotta be true with other people if i'm true to myself why i gotta tell what you do huh wait let me make sure i'm reading that right but why i gotta be true with other people if i'm true to myself why i gotta tell what you do i don't really get that question i would like for you to reword that but if i'm reading what i do understand correctly i feel like i gotta tell people i see i don't i don't feel like i don't feel like you gotta tell people what you do i feel like you give them what they need to get that's, that's what i was just saying earlier it's like the only person you really got to be true to is yourself. I'm not saying go out and live a lie and put a face out on in public, but like not everybody deserves 100% of you. Like there's things about me that y'all probably would never know, you know, and it's not, it's not bad things, but like not everybody deserves that much access to you. You know, the things, the things that, that we deem sacred are the things that we deem personal and intimate, you know? So just, that's just level, it's levels to personality. It's levels, it's levels to perspective and subjection, you know? So you just got to take the time to like really determine who, how much of you, you want to be to others. I feel like that's a great way to think about it and start. Like the moment you start doing that is the moment. Cause oftentimes tells people, forget what other people think about you. Do what you're going to do. And, and, and not, I will say this too. Don't, don't, don't feel as though you're perfect because even I have room to go. Y'all have room to grow. Everybody got room to grow. No, nobody's a, a God. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, you shouldn't be, how can I put it? You shouldn't be relying on others perspective of you to determine truly who you are. You should use those perspectives to construct yourself or to take heed to the actual truth. The friends that's actually truthful with their perspective of you that's going to give you the real, you know, like the friends that's actually going to tell you about yourself in a, in a nurturing holistic standpoint. Of course, those people, but like, you know, do what you got to do and do what's best for you. I have, I can't see that. I have a fear of death. How do I overcome the fact that my life is going to end one day? I used to suffer with that really, really, really bad. And I honestly, I feel as though you don't, I don't feel like that's something you can get used to because there's always fear in the unknown. It's like even people that like believe, like somebody like me, I believe in, in going and be with God after I die. You know, but I haven't died. I haven't talked to anybody who has died and crossed over. So I don't know what's going on on the other side. I know what I believe in. I know what my experiences be a spiritual to physical are, which makes me believe in certain things, but I haven't died. So their fear can come from the unknown, but at the same time, it's just coming to grips with that reality. It's coming to grips with those things in particular that's, that's just going to happen inevitably. You know, so how I view it and what has helped me cope or to, to feel better about it when the time does come is to live as much life as I can now because I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know what's going to happen on the other side. But if I live the best life I can now, the most constructive life I can now and go for my dreams, balls to the wall now, then what do it's like? I don't want to die full, essentially, like die empty, because when we do pass, do it do like like when you lay down, it's like Ugh, and you going out, you ain't got not one regret. You ain't got not one nothing. That's how you got to live your life. That's, that's going to help you out. At least I feel it's going to help you out, but you know, it is what it is. I fear loving the wrong person because they portray themselves as one thing and they are. Pray for discernment and pray for intuition and trust your gut. Because oftentimes we don't ask for those things or we, or we ignore those signs. And then when that stuff starts happening or it gets to a certain point, now don't be wrong, some people could play a role now. 
I was in a relationship like that. Was trying, like nine months of deception, you know. But then like once I started showing me stuff and I actually started paying, taking heed to things that was meant for me, to be seen for me. And that's because that's always going to be a way out. I don't care what nobody said. You always have a way out. Whether you see it or not, there will always be a way presented out for you. And no matter how extreme, thank you for the rose, my love, no matter how extreme. And once you start making yourself available and looking for those things and praying for those things and trying to manifest those things, it's going to happen. Because you got some people that have, like prime example, Amber, immaculate dis uh, discernment. Immaculate. Like on another level. The things that I oftentimes miss physically and spiritually, boom, she got a dream. Hey, I, I had this weird dream last night. Hey, I feel like this about this. Hey, we should do this. Hey, have you ever thought about this? And it happens. Just like, just gifted with discernment, you know? So focus, meditate, and pray on that. And I feel like that's going to really guide you through. I had to go through it the hard way. I had to go through the hard relationship after relationship. Trust me. I've been cheated on plenty. And I'm a good guy. I provide. I've never cheated a day in my life. I'm not abusive. I'm not controlling. I provide. Like, I'm healthy. I keep myself in shape. I make sure I perform in the you know what. I make sure I, I do everything that I can do. You know, but it's like, even in me, even in me giving my all and being a good person, you can give, you can be that type of person and, and wrongfully give that to somebody who doesn't deserve that. And you end up in heartbreak every time. Because I oftentimes tell people whether you're amazing or whether you're not, I ain't even going to say amazing, whether you doing the right things or not in a relationship, like just because you, you, you gave it to that person or you didn't see it that, and that person cheated on you, it doesn't mean that it's your fault. People that want to cheat, they cheat. People that have opportunities to cheat and like, and like they don't, they don't even think about the relationship, they're going to cheat. I've been in a relationship going on four years. I'm trying to get married. You know, like I'm finally in a financial place so where I can get married. You know, so it's like I'm trying to propose all that type of stuff, get the ring, all that type of stuff. But at the end, y'all see up there, I've been with this beautiful lady for going on almost four years. Like that's that's my soul. You know, but like in regard in regards to like y'all, the topic at hand, you know, it, it's like I've been in situations to where like I had plenty of opportunity to cheat. I've had people sliding my DMs already and knowing I got a girlfriend, like just all like I'm talking about like she ain't got to know. And I know these type of women. I, I know their criteria like, oh, she ain't got no blah, blah, blah. I had the opportunity. I had exes came back and like tried to slide in like it was nothing. But it was my opportunity and my duty to say no, because being in a relationship and trying to get married, you're about to make me talk and going into a marriage and stuff like that. You have to even on your bad days, you got to wake up and choose your partners even if y'all argued the night before and y'all had a disagreement and y'all went to sleep mad at each other, even though that's not good to do, and you wake up still mad at that person, you still wake up and choose that person the next day, regardless of what happens. You know, and if you and if you're doing that, you know, like you like I say, whenever you pass, like you left with no regrets. You live your life to the fullest. And just because somebody cheats on you, that does not mean that you're the problem. I hate that. Like I see people on social media, you got so many people, man and woman. Well, everybody just heartbroken. Such and such cheated on me. Blah blah blah. What am I? Blah blah blah. And they be amazing people, be having the best qualities of partnership. But you gave that. You how they say in the Bible? You cast your pearl to swines. Like you can give a baby three four hundred dollar bills and they'll rip it up because they don't know the value of it. You know. But then you give three four hundred dollars to somebody like me. Look. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna invest it. I'm gonna do it right. But when somebody does not know how to value or cherish that beautiful thing, that valuable thing, it's not one sided. I hate this war that we got going on with affection, men versus women, and all this type of stuff. How about we just treat each other accordingly and and do what works for the relationship? You know. And if you, and no matter how much you feel for that person, if they can't be faithful to you, you can't make them faithful to you. It is what it is. It's like I've been in a relationship where this person was pretty much everything, almost everything that I wanted. And she cheated. You know, it's like, and I, and I was everything she wanted. And she cheated. You know, so it's, it's like, and and I'm not even going to that. I'm not even going to that. But what I will say, what I will say is people are going to do what they want to do. Regardless of how good your best is, regardless of who you are, how you look, all that type of stuff. Find somebody that rocks with you. Pray for discernment, pray for intuition, and move forward and trust your spirit and trust your gut. Because I will also say there was times where I questioned the relationship, especially the relationship that I got cheated on. I quit. What's up, Raven? Well, first of all, shout out to Raven. The queen is in the building. One of my best friends. I love you, girl. Um, and I hope you're doing good. Um, and I would love for you to have to be on one of these episodes eventually too. I love you, Raven. 
But um, I'm gonna say this before I get back to the question. Now, if I haven't got to y'all questions, um, put them back in so I could I can answer my order. But I, I'm I'm in that section. This subject with this, I'll say this. Whenever you are trying to get the best out of your relationship and who you are, or even if you're in a situation to where like you feel something is off, or you questioning stuff in your relationship, bring those questions to your partner. And if you don't feel uh, comfortable bringing that question to your partner, pray and meditate on it and ask, and ask your spirit to guide you and give you the answers and pray for it to come to the light. Because let me tell you something, there will never be a day when you're actually trying to dwell in discernment and dwell in clarity and it will not come to you. Especially if you're doing what you got to do, excuse me, and you're sowing those seeds for that, like it, it, it has no choice but to come back to you. And just because somebody didn't value you doesn't mean that you don't have value. And doesn't mean that you're that you're not somebody like they say one man's trash is another man's treasure. They need to stop that. Because one man's mishandled treasure is somebody's lifetime achievement award. Let's be honest about about that. A lot of y'all walking around like some Grammys getting treated like a a, a drink from the uh from the corner store. A lot of y'all walking around uh and y'all have the value of a number one billboard hit, but they treating you like you're a SoundCloud rapper. Like don't let nobody mistreat you out of your value and who you are. Like you a lot, especially the people that's if y'all up in here, I know y'all y'all trying to be something divine in life. Because I, I love what I love about my followers is that people actually come to me for for holistic wellness. And not even just the food and the chronic illnesses, for life. So if you in here, value yourself and add, continue to add value to yourself. You know what you suck at. You know what you struggle with. Tackle and deal with that and grow as a person. And also understand what that other side of you is. Because I denied that part of myself for a while. My bad habits. You know, not to say I'm an evil person, but like, you know, just the stuff that would eventually lead me into a damnation. Or to like something that would do do horrible for me or create horrible habits. I dealt with that. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that's who I am. That doesn't mean that's who I have to be. But I acknowledge the fact that I struggle with these things. And I have to be true to myself. Remember what we talked about earlier, being true with yourself in order to get past that. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Um, thanks for saying that. Much love, much love. He literally said he doesn't feel worth the love I give. What? That's crazy. I knew being a cheater, I knew being a cheater had more to do with his struggles with himself. Most definitely. The, the people that typically cheat, they're not happy. Or they just can't settle down. Like, my thing is, I'm, here's my ideology on relationships. If I want to be for these streets, I'm going to be for these streets. If I want to be in a relationship, I'm going to be in a relationship. And that's just me. That's another thing, too. I believe in monogamy. I'm not built for that open relationship. Time. I'm just going to be honest. If that's for you, cool. That's y'all thing. I'm not built for no... Uh, no, I know I am built for monogamy. I'm not built for that polyamorous, all the other type of stuff, life, all of that. I'm only good with one person. I, I will get, bro, I will get jealous so quick. I don't care if we agree to a threesome, foursome, fivesome, sixsome, sevensome, eightsome, ninesome, tensome. The moment I see something up, like, is no, I'm possessive. I am possessive of what, what's for me. You know, so I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't, I don't know. 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 That's not, that's not for me. I can wholeheartedly say that's not for me. You know, but you got some people that's just, if, like, they, their conditions are, I can be for you, but not exclusively. We can be a couple, but not exclusively in this area. I'm not built like that. I want to build a life with one person. I want to build a life with, and you know, it's like, and if you with that polyamorous stuff, go do that. But like, yet again, because there's, there's people that's in those, those type of relationships and still get cheated on because there's guidelines to those. You know what I'm saying? So it just is what it is. It is with like, when people don't respect your guidelines, and, and, and to me, those people, because they're not like, oh, well, they don't respect the relationship, they don't respect you, blah, 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 blah. That's true, but they really don't respect themselves, and they really don't respect what they've been blessed with. Pe them people, they're going through. They're like, they'll have a severe emotion or a confliction or a conviction about something, and it will make them do something irrational. Now, some of y'all built for that type of stuff, some of y'all not. I'm not. I know my word. So, it, <laughs> it is what it is. That's a, that is a deal breaker for me, but like, you work through it. Some like you just you work through it. You get through it, and you become better, or whatever it is, you know. But that's just, that's just life. That's just life. I'm getting hungry. Um, me either. No tea, no shade. But I can't do it either. It is what it is. Like I don't. I can't. I'm. I'm a passionate lover. 
like I don't Lord don't let me kid. see that's another thing too side tangent like I'm one of the people one of my bad habits like I'm talking about is I envision what would be if such was to happen and it puts me in a down spiral so like I had to stop contemplating on what happens if my partner cheats or I catch my partner cheating what would I do and blah 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 I didn't painted a whole movie in my head a whole Marvel movie in my head of what I do how I get like I, that's one of my habits you know so it's like just I'm not I'm not mm -mm. I focus on me I focus on mine I pray for the Lord to reveal whatever needs to be revealed whatever don't keep it over there and whoever I'm dealing with no you got one time you got one time cross that line if you want to that's on you you better hope you better just tell you better hope and pray to God that you tell me and I'm just not like I don't know how I'm gonna react it is what it is um and we have to make sure we don't let society pressure us into a relationship you couldn't have said that any better than what you said you couldn't have said any better than what you said because like oh my god one thing i do not like as this hive mind society that we have in social media right now is that relationships have to be a b and c relationships have to be one two and three get out of my blank face get out of my blanket because i can't say because they're gonna they're gonna flag me get out of my blanket and blank face i'm gonna have the relationship that's best for me and if it's best for me to be single right now i'm gonna be single if it's best for me to be in a relationship i'm gonna be in a relationship like stop letting other people tell you how to live your life live your life because if they was living your life they wouldn't even make the half the same decision that you was made because they're not built for that I'm so so sick of it because we get older and in age and are my bad y'all gotta see we go older and are single i'm taking my time bro. yeah most definitely most definitely ain't nobody know what's meant for you is gonna be for you now don't miss your blessing don't miss your opportunity but what's meant for you is meant for you every every aspect and every moment of our life is based off of the decisions that we make so it is what it is i'm the same way i will make a whole scene in my head and be hurt and nothing happened. no that was my downfall i'm telling you raven that was my downfall like I had, man, I just had to stop doing that stuff, bro. I, I really did. And I didn't even realize I was doing it as much until I started, like, acting a certain type of way. And now I'm in a place where it's like, woo, get get on. Because that's not, like I said in the, um, if y'all go back and watch the mental health therapy uh episode I did on my YouTube with Brooke, the therapist that came on there, she broke that. I'm not even going to try to re-explain it. She broke that down to a T. Y'all, please go back and watch that. Please go back and watch that. Um, The time, this time after a failed 28-year relationship, I would not settle. Yeah, do that do that like there's somebody for everybody bro focus on you do what's best for you at the end of the day is like nobody's gonna live your life for you but you so you have to do what's best for you because if you don't do that you're gonna be because the, the last thing you want to do is live a lie the last thing you want to do is live a life that's not for you and you want to the last thing you want to do is live a life that is not fulfilling for you because the moment you start doing that what are you living for who are you living for? You know, so it's like, I'm not saying make the worst decisions for a momentary high. But what I am saying is always think about your quality of life and how you can better it. Because we're all human. We're going to have our downfalls. We're going to have our slip ups. Nobody's perfect. If it was that easy to just go through life in a straight line and you get to the finish line, it's all cookie grits and blah, 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 blah. Everybody be doing it. But life, we all know life look like this. Let me go back a little bit. Or let me go back a little bit. Like it's just it's never a straight line. So do what you can with your roller coaster, cause that's what life be feeling like to me sometimes. It's like you be doing good, 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 and then some crap come out the window somewhere, and it's like all right, but it be life lessons. It be cycles you gotta break. You know, it be mindsets you gotta break. And then once you get past that, it is what it is. But I'm I'm liking I'm liking y'all questions. And once again, if I didn't get to y'all question, the phone is way over there. So and I if like this is me reaching all the way out and I have really long arms. I have like really long arms. So like if this is me reaching all the way out and I, I'm not even remotely close to the phone. So I can't just be scrolling back and forth. So if y'all got questions that y'all ask, just ask them again. If y'all um if I missed your comment or something, just put it again. It's not charged until the length of my arms and not my heart. <laughs> I'm not actively trying to uh what you call it avoid nobody. I don't know questions all that. You know I like to spoke. But anyways, um big shout out to y'all also too. Like we. I've been, y'all, I've really been living for these lives. I've been, I've really been living for these podcasts because I have some of the best people. And also, if you're new and if you don't know, uh, typically Monday through Friday, uh, 3.15 Central Standard Time is the time that I come on here. I typically do like an hour, hour and a half. I just talk and I talk with y'all and stuff like that. But um, that's typically how I do it. I don't, I don't really, I put, and if people miss episodes, I always upload these on, like after I finish with this, 
I'm going to download it, cut my snippets out for my shorts, and then uh, post a few shorts and then post that and schedule the, uh, the actual episode to be posted probably tonight, tomorrow, whatever. So, like, anything that you miss, any other episodes that you're like, well, what, what has he been talking about? Who's been on the show? Go to my YouTube. Coach Brian. Like, just go to my YouTube, and then it's gonna, all that stuff is going to be on there. And we've, been, we've actually been doing... This is probably the most traction I've gotten on YouTube ever in my life. Like, and I love that it's not like... And granted, y'all know I post my little comedy, my little skits. I'm grateful for the likes. I'm grateful for all that type of stuff. But I love that the videos that have been doing really well on my profile, my profile are the mental health videos, are the holistic remedy videos, are the uh, ideology videos where I'm really sitting down having like in-depth conversations with y'all and the comments y'all been leaving is phenomenal. The viewership is phenomenal. The messages I've been getting, the DMs, all that type of stuff. Y'all keep learning and keep progressing and keep inquiring because this is what we do it for. This is literally what we do it for. But I love y'all. In all, in all things, I, I, I love y'all, man. Cool beans, I'm going to start tuning in. This is my second time. It's been great dialogue. When was your first time? When was your first uh Queen Hawk at 444? I'm trying to remember if I if I saw you in like my notifications before. What was your what was your first episode? Or what was your first chime in that you had, uh, that you saw? We love you back. Oh, I appreciate y'all, Miss Yvette. I hope I hope I'm saying your name right, Yvette. But yeah, um when was it when was your first episode? Uh, what was, what, was the, what were we talking about? Because I know for sure. Uh, I want Chris. If y'all don't know who Chris Jones is, go on TikTok and TikTok and type in uh Chris Jones World. Y'all can um go check him out. I'm trying to get him on here. I'm trying to get Kenny Wade on here. I know for sure Brooke is gonna be back. Um, uh, I want to get Amber on here for sure, for sure. Um, my dad is gonna be on here. I definitely want, bro. I can't wait to do an episode with my mom. Like, for all y'all that don't know that that haven't been following me like long time ago, like y'all know my mama is like me on 10 i get a lot of my personality from that lady and i feel like that's gonna be a fun episode uh i definitely want to do one with my sister and um definitely raven whenever you in town or whenever if i got my gear and we out where you live i would love to get up so especially you and your and your uh your partner y'all y'all dope and all ten thousand of them doggone cats <laughs> but um yeah that's, that's why i'm at with like moving forward with the podcast like i really feel and i, and I want to get of course i want to get like my other friends like b y'all know b didn't been on here like two three times get um uh tal on here a few times i want to get reiki on here again uh but you know time i'm gonna let time do his thing but what she said i want to say this weekend what was i talking about this weekend uh i don't remember what i was talking about this weekend i don't remember but i'm glad you like i'm glad you like it um i just wish i had this kind of stuff in person i haven't found a crew in dallas that speaks this um I wish I knew more people in Dallas. I got have a few friends in Dallas, but they don't they don't do this type of stuff. I just keep tuning in. You know, and we might actually meet. You never know. I like I love Texas. I love me some Texas. I've been talking about going to Dallas for the past two months. I love me some Texas. Whether it be huge. my favorite city in Texas is Austin. I've had the best shows out there. Got paid the most out there for performing. Um, the city's awesome. The food is good. The scenery is dope. You know, they don't have as many homeless people out there. I love that when I even when I drop like the hoods and stuff like that, it doesn't look like like they actually. They actually take care of the city, you know. Now, granted, I don't. I'm not a civilian. I don't live there. I don't know the ins and outs. But for the the many of times I've been there, it's been dope. But um, yeah, I like I like I like Texas a lot. I wish I. Oh no, I had stumbled on here like I did today. You were talking about gratitude when I tuned in. Oh, bet that sounds like something I'd be talking about. <laughs> but I'm I'm grateful. Just hit the follow, bro. Look, I often tell I tell people hit the follow button and cut on the post live notification. But even the people that have said they've done that and don't notify them when I go live. But still do it, of course. But I'm letting y'all know, 3.15 Central Standard Time, I come on. Like, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday. It just depends. I didn't come on yesterday because I was just getting back. I told y'all last week I wasn't going to be back because I was on my trip. I went to see Kendrick Lamar. My God, it was amazing. But, um, you know, this typically way. I love coming on live. Like, it's dope. She said she in Dallas. Oh, yeah, I got to come to Dallas. That's, that's my... I've, I've been to Dallas maybe once, I believe. I don't know if I... I'm trying to remember if I've been or if I... I don't, I don't remember. But I know for sure I've been to Houston, Austin... San Antonio, Beaumont, and I forgot wherever else. I've been to like a bunch of places in Texas, but I don't know if I've been in. I don't remember if I've been to Dallas. I honestly can't remember yet. I want to say I did, but I, but I, some saying that I haven't. But I don't know. I don't want to go there soon, real real soon. Um, same. I ran by his live and tuned in, and I and I'm grateful for y'all. I'm grateful for y'all. It's hot here, lol. Look, <laughs> it's hot down here too, girl. I'm in uh, what you call it? I'm in uh, Southern Louisiana. It's it's hot down here too, but. I don't know. I, I'm outside every day a lot, so I didn't got used to it. It doesn't really bother me as much. I work out outside. Like, I'd rather lift weights outside. 
So, but that's just me. I'm, I'm a little cuckoo. But I don't know. The last time I've been to Texas, it was it was hot, but it wasn't like hot, like crazy hot, like it is down here. Down here, I feel like it's it's a lot more humid too. Y'all got more of a dry heat. Y'all do have humidity, but it's a lot more of a dry heat out here. It's humid, so like you get like that wet, sticky hot. It's just it's a different type of hot, and you be sweating your behind off. It's crazy out here. But um, let's see. I chuck it up to alignment for for yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I'm, bro. Yes. I underestimated the heat for real. <laughs> where you at, K bro? K bro, uh, down here. Where you at? You said you un you uh, underestimated it. You sound like you in the south too. All all of us southerners are just scorching hot right now. But like I said before, forest uh, regeneration or um, uh, herbal regeneration. The more are oh, you in San Antonio? Yeah, you hot. You about to, you in the desert? But um, like the more plants and the more trees and stuff we start growing back in our areas, like the climate is gonna re regulate itself. Like it's. You just gotta you gotta give nature a chance to shake back. You really you really do. But um this is the like this is the part of the live where y'all can do one last push if y'all want to um fill up the like meter again before I get off of here. Just throw me an algorithm. I appreciate that. I just moved from Louisiana. Oh love, good luck, good luck, Shay. But um <laughs> to put me further in the algorithm because I'm gonna do a few more questions, I'm gonna get off because it looks like it's starting to slow down a little bit. Yo, if we do a meet and greet, I would bring food. I have vegan options too. I mean I'm not I'm not I'm not saying no to that. There's no more lady gonna be with me because we we like to eat. It's a competition. It's a competition. But yeah, let's do that. I have a juice of hot dog cold press. Cold press is juicing, so it's like you're not pasteurizing it. You're not adding any concentrate. You're not mixing it with no type of artificial nothing. Like get your fruits. Matter of fact, go um go on one of my most recent videos. I believe it's on like the fourth row of my TikTok. It's the um orange and apple juice mixture I made, and I should do. I just juice like cucumbers and apple. I did not make a video. I should have did that. But it's just because I be in the moment. I don't be thinking to make videos and stuff like that. But um, just go do it. Like if you have a juicer, just do it like that. That's cold press. Cold press is natural, like 100% natural. But um, if y'all don't have any more questions, I'm wait. Give me like 10 seconds. Okay, cool. If y'all don't have any more questions, uh, I'm about to get off this thing. I'm about to go. Um, actually, I want some more fruit juice. I got some sitting in the living room. I'm about to go drink. Uh, the cucumbers and apples I told y'all made uh, yesterday maybe about a good 30 spots of that stuff but I'm about to head out it was great talking with y'all it was great uh, yet again another live I'm very appreciative um, and it, all your stuff, all the stuff that y'all missed y'all can go on YouTube I'm going to have it uploaded later on today if not tomorrow um, I do have the subscription thing now so you can do I don't know where it's I honestly don't know where it's at on here but you can go to my, VP, my VIP now uh oh what's happening my thing must be dying god dog it you can go to my vip now you can go to all of that type of stuff now and you can um you can basically like oh that's catching up my bad i'm looking at the reflective screen behind and like it's lagging bad right now but um you can go to my uh you can go do the vip thing you can subscribe and all that type of stuff and get your badges and all of that we have uh vip chats to where this chats between us that nobody in this live could see we have personal emojis we can make um you, you have access to exclusive content and stuff like that so as a, if y'all want to do it cool if y'all want to do it it's fine i just got it yesterday i'm still trying to figure it out it is what it is but y'all go follow me on youtube y'all go follow me on instagram y'all plugging myself y'all go to my shop y'all go to coachbrown.com y'all go get y'all protocol y'all go get y'all something or whatever it is what it is but support me because i need support but other than that i wish y'all the best y'all have a good one y'all be good y'all praise god and y'all just live a good life <laughs> try your best to live a good plentiful life adios Turn around.